since the last video I have broken the wire connection so I've installed on the back of this Arduino here an NRF 24LO1 module this is just a temporary arrangement to pick up the signal and transmit it to the laptop it wasn't without its problems because it caused an issue with the auto zero on startup code for some reason the code I put onto this was exactly the same as the working code from the other parameter but for some reason I would always end up with a zero value of minus 15 around about that um, what I tracked it down to was the radio when it seemed to start transmitting it was causing a slight voltage drop um, I'm not quite sure why that is Either the radios themselves are configured differently, so they are in a low power state until they first transmit. Or it's something to do with the Arduino board, um, the way the 5 volts is supplying the 3 volt regulator or something, the 3.3 volt regulator. Not sure, but uh, I fixed it by getting it to transmit before the auto zero code, and so it just transmits zeros which is quite useful anyway because it tells me it successfully started the reset process I've also installed a temporary switch on here a LED which tells me if it's zeroed properly it just flashes every time it transmits data if it's within plus or minus one and I've also got it measuring the battery voltage as well and displaying it as an approximate percentage and that's the red line on the screen there it occasionally drops out for some reason the analog read doesn't like all the interrupts which are going on behind the scenes in the code whilst it's trying to measure that so occasionally it drops out I've also as you can see miniaturized it so that it fits inside there um, and it's working as a wireless power meter now, as you can see. Data is successfully being sent to here. So the next thing to do, now that I have also covered up the strain gauges with some wax, is to calibrate it in a more thorough way now. So I'm going to be a bit more careful about the measurements, do a few more of them, and plot a graph and then we can move on and put that information into the code to successfully calibrate it and I shall go through the maths for that next once I've got a graph this graph here is the result of the last calibration that I've done using the method demonstrated in the previous video so we have the weight kilograms here against the change in the value of the ADC and we've plotted on here a trend line with an equation and it looks like this value here will be eight times the uh, kilogram weight so we can use that now to do the next stage and just out of interest I have also calculated what the resolution will be and it's actually turned out to be better than the other parameter I'm not quite sure what's happened we've got it down to 125 grams this equation here is for power in watts torque times speed rpm divided by this value here and that's there because this is not an SI unit we're gonna have code that gives us this rpm but we're gonna have for this part a value from the ADC which is a meaningless value um, so what we need to do is find a multiplier we can add into here as well so that we can get something that is useful so we know now from the graph what the change in the ADC value will be if we load it up with one kilogram so it'll be one over the change in the value um, but we want to know what the multiplier is which we'll call x but that's for a kilogram and we want it for newtons so we need to use the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81 divide that by the 8 and we get this value here which is what you need to multiply the ADC value by to get 
force in newtons. We then, of course, want torque from this, and torque is newton meters, so that is a force times the uh, distance from the pivot point. And in this case, it will be this value because the crank is 172.5 millimeters long. So we get this value here. Now because it's a single-sided power meter, we need to multiply that by 2. And what we get is this value here. And that is going to be our multiplier, which we are going to use along with the average ADC value for a rotation. So you put into this part of the equation here, so that we can get the power for the rotation of the crank. I've now uploaded full power meter code to the Arduino with the value we've just calculated changed in it. And uh, it's now flashing the LED to say that it's zeroed out correctly. And it's also communicating with the automatic shifter that's on the bike. And that's outputting uh, Bluetooth data to this phone here. And the middle graph is the battery percentage of the power meter. And the uh, lower graph there is the raw value from the ADC after it's been zeroed out. And as you'll see, if I push on the crank, that value will increase. And if I pull back on the crank, you get the idea now. Um, so what that means is that we can now go and test this. This is some of the very first data that I received from the power meter, displayed on the left hand side coming via the automatic shifter, and on the right hand side the Garmin vector pedals. Now this is a really exciting moment to see that it's actually displaying power data, considering all the amount of work that I put into it to get it to this stage. And the accuracy doesn't look too bad either, although it's quite hard to tell because the values change so much, so uh, graphs already prove that. And that's what I did in further testing after I filmed this, and there are a few minor issues which I shall go into in more detail in future videos. You may spot one of them if you watch this for a bit longer, and that is that above around 350 watts, it tends to underread the power. Um, but otherwise, I shall leave that to a future video. I'm going to let this play for a bit longer so you can watch it to the end if you want. But uh, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you for watching.